Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at how to identify different audio track types. Now, one of the areas that Premiere Pro really excels at is being open and adaptable to almost anything. It's also one of the biggest uh, problem points in Premiere Pro. There's lots of ways to get things wrong. You can put the wrong audio in the wrong kind of track and Premiere Pro will not care. It's up to you to identify it. So this tutorial really came about by um, a post I saw where someone said, what are those letters? And they meant the little identifiers on the track. So I thought I would take uh, the time to show you these identifiers, the different track types, and a couple more tips while we're there. Let's have a look. So I've created a bunch of tracks already, and you can see them down here. Some are empty, some have things in them. So let's just look at the letters as someone called them. What are those letters? Well, the first track you'll see here has nothing, and this is called a standard track. You might think that you have to choose either mono or stereo inside Premiere Pro, you don't. Uh, you can choose a standard track, which can contain both stereo and mono. This drives a lot of broadcast people nuts because they only want either stereo or uh, mono. But standard can have anything in it. Just below that is a 5.1 track, a surround sound track. Premiere Pro only supports 5. Uh, 0.1, it doesn't support 5.7 or A or, or any of those other formats. When I open this track up, I want you to notice what the audio uh, clip looks like. This is a real 5.1 clip. If I play this back in the audio track mixer, you'll, you'll see once it starts playing through all these different tracks, you'll see that there are more than one track. And Adobe does this just to make it a little economical when you don't have enough room to show that. But I'm holding the Alt key or the Option on Mac and scrolling and watch. It'll get to a point where it'll pop there. See? One and six. And once you get open to that point, now you'll see all of the tracks. And it, if they did this large view in a tiny view, you would just see a bunch of mush in there. So when it's closed up, the preview is doing its best to show you with different shades that there's multiple um, uh, channels in this particular clip. Now, if if you're accidentally dropping in 5.1 files, uh, boy, oh boy, you're in trouble. You should know when you're importing, working with, uh, and exporting out. I've got a whole, I'll link in the description to my tutorials on surround sound. Now, the next one, you'll see it very hard to, to see icon one little speaker this is a mono track and look what i have in there that's a stereo wave in a mono track yes you can completely mess things up you can drag these down and put stereo in mono and mono in stereo and whatever you want be aware of, of your options and treat them accordingly in the broadcast world a lot of uh, editing uh, protocols are just mono Every single track has to be mono unless it's a stereo track like environmental sound or music. Below that is a number, two. This is an adaptive track. My recommendation to you is to forget I even mentioned adaptive and never use them. Adaptive takes the amount of channels it has from the mix track. So if the mix has 16, the adaptive has 16. If the mix has 32, the adaptive has 32. Adaptive tracks were created for archiving, for BBC, CNN. You got to remember that when shows are archived, they want to be able to, in the future, reuse material. They want to do things like uh, remove the, the music if they don't have a license to the music or any uh, audio dubs for different languages, be able to use them or add to them. So it's just a stack of, of tracks that they can do something with later. That's the only benefit. Don't use them. Adobe even contemplating getting rid of them for a while. But anyway, that's adaptive. Now, I've got some submix tracks in here, and you'll see the same thing. One speaker, well, that's a mono submix. This, there, you can't have a standard submix. 
This is a stereo submix, uh, surround submix, and an adaptive submix. What's a submix? A submix is a special track that you can send audio to that track. So imagine you had a room and you were trying to create the sound design for the environment in this room, and you start adding different um, sound effects and Foley for that room. If you take all of those, pan them throughout the, the stereo field that they need to be, if you send each one of those, all of those to a submix and then you put a reverb on the submix, it helps glue all of that stuff together. Uh, it's very useful. I'll also put a link in the description for my submix um, tutorial. Here's another great tip to help you um, see what you're looking at. If you look at my audio track mis mixer, this is not the clip mixer, this is the track mixer. You'll notice that there's a place where you can name the tracks down at the bottom. So it's easy to see what you're dealing with. Typically you can't see those names in a standard timeline. But if you customize this, for instance, I'm gonna move my mouse over to the uh, standard track and right click and choose Customize. And you'll see a Customize box that comes up where I can set what this is. It's a little confusing. This is the button editor here and you're dragging to the highlighted blue area. These are all the buttons that are there already. But if I grab this one called Track Name and drag it past the microphone, and now when I click OK, boom just drag the middle of this over a little bit, a little bit more. Now I can see the names of all the tracks, same as I've named over here. You can also right click on each one of these and rename them. I also want to show you that when you're making a sequence, you'll easily see these choices for, for track types. If you're used to just dragging a clip into the timeline and making a new timeline, you'll never see these and the timeline will make a track based on that clip. So if it's stereo, standard, it's gonna make standard. If it's uh, surround, it'll make surround. But if you make a new sequence, I'll click here in my new item, new sequence. If you go to tracks and twirl this down, there they are, standard, 5.1, adaptive, mono, and all of the submixes. So Adobe gives you lots of ways to work with these, but like I said at the beginning, if you make a mistake and you put the wrong clip in the wrong track and output and it doesn't sound right, you need to know these things and understand these things. So if you're just doing standard stuff, you record your phone, you drop it in, you export to YouTube, you'll probably not run into these problems. But if it's any of this is a little bit more complex than that, if you're bringing in cameras with multi-track audio into it, then you've got to understand this and uh, work with it accordingly. Like I said, stay away from adaptive. Hey, if you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to read the forums out there and decipher what, what do those letters mean, and then turn it into what I think is a useful tutorial.